Hey everybody, MS Farzan here, and welcome back to this video series on learning JavaScript for digital tabletop game and web development. In the previous video, we talked about var variables and data types, and in this video, we're going to put that knowledge to work with functions creating reus reusable code that we can use over and over again in our programs. So we have um, declared these three variables x is equal to hello world, y is equal to 5, and z is equal to true. Let's figure out how to do some simple computations with it and uh, with this information. Let's say instead of console logging x plus y plus z and these spaces in, in between, let's just say console log x plus, uh, sorry, y plus 5. Run our script by saying node log.js, and we see the response we get is 10. Uh, node has uh, figured out the computation for us and added y, which is a variable, but in, in y is stored an integer, and we've added to it 5, and we get 10. Great. We can say minus 5, and we get 0. We can get uh, we can say y times 5 or y divided by 5. All of those are different options. And um, what's uh, what would be fun is if we can um, have some sort of way to do computations uh, without necessarily having to, like, let's say we have, let's keep this as y plus 5, and let's create um, let a equals 10. So if we wanted to know what uh, y plus 5 is, and we also wanted to know what console.log a plus 5, we could write these two different statements. And now we, when we run our log.js, we see 10 and 15. That y plus 5 is 5 plus 5, so that's 10. And a plus 5 is, um, well, 10 plus 5, so that's 15. Um, and that's just fine. Yet, there is a coding principle which is called DRY, don't repeat yourself. So it is better for us to create uh, compartmentalized code that we can re reuse over and over again so that we don't have like 100 lines of code when we could maybe just have 50 or 60 or 70. Whatever we can do to make our code most more efficient is usually in our best interest. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, call, we're gonna create a function. And we're gonna say, Below here, just like we, um, or actually above all this, just like we said, let x equals hello world, or we uh, declared a variable, we're going to instead declare a function. And we're going to say, let um, add 5 equals function, parentheses, and then curly braces. Before we do anything here, let's discuss what this means. By saying let, we're just that's just a way of signifying that we want to create a new function. And we're giving this function a name, which is called add5. The way I've written this, this here is it has a lowercase a and a higher case, uppercase f. And that's called camel case. Um, it's a uh, often a um, best practice that is used in JavaScript to name your functions and your variables using camel case like this in other programming languages, like uh, in Python, you'll see um, them write functions using what's called snake case. So we would say add underscore five. We're not going to do that here in, in JavaScript generally, um, although there are certainly many exceptions. We're going to use this camel case where the first letter of your function is a lowercase letter, and then every um, new word in that function is going to have uh, a, an uppercase after it. So if I wanted to say add five numbers, the n would also be uppercase. That's just the convention. Then I say let add 5 be equal to a function. Uh, function is a keyword that you use in JavaScript to let it know that it's um, um, that you are indeed uh, attempting to write a function, uh, although there are other ways of doing this, uh, as we'll see in the future. We'll put parentheses uh, next to it, and we're not going to do anything with that just right now. And then uh, these curly braces signify a code block, and we're saying by writing it this way, we're saying that this function, when we run it, we want it to execute everything within these two curly br braces or within this code block. 
And um, you'll also notice that Visual Studio has indented my uh, cursor about one tab. Um, and that's also a convention. So if your code editor, for whatever reason, doesn't do that, it's a really good idea to keep your code blocks indented that way so that um, I'm able to look, okay, here's the top level um, of my code, and then everything within this function is encapsulated, and my eyes can just parse it very easily and see that, um, that it makes sense that way. Unlike other programming languages like uh, Python, you might not get in trouble if you don't uh, indent correctly, like Python will will not run your scripts if you don't indent correctly. JavaScript's not like that, but um, there are some cases in which this will be very important. So it's good to take note of at the from the get-go. And in this add5 function, I'm just, I'm just gonna say, let add5 equals uh, function return in parentheses five plus five. And underneath all this, I'm going to delete this, and I'm going to just say console.log add five. Let's run this, and then we'll discuss what's happening. I see 10. OK, what's happened here? In our add five function, we've just said return, or that's one way of saying send, up back, of the, send back up the chain um, this uh, information here in between these parentheses. Right now we've said 5 plus 5. We could uh, very much just write here 5 within quotation marks. And when we run this, it'll say 5. I'm just saying return what's ever be between these parentheses um, up to whatever um, is calling the function. That's what's a, that's what is called when you run a function. That's called I I called the add five function. Let's return it to five plus five. Now the way we call this function is just to say console.log add five. If we wanted to call it within our script without logging it to the console um, in this way, we could just say add five. And we have to put the um, the parentheses right after it, um, and I'll explain why in just a second. But in general, when you refer to a function, you refer to it with the with the parentheses afterwards, even if there's no nothing in between those parentheses. That's part of the convention. Save it, run it, and we see that it is um, it has logged uh, 10 to the console because we've asked it to log 10, um, and it's not logging the add five um, function, although that function is running in the background. Cool. Let's make this a little bit more um, robust, so to speak. Um, let's say that the add5 function takes a um, what's called a parameter called number. I'll save it. A parameter is anything that goes in between the uh, parentheses when you are declaring a function. That means that this function is dependent upon us providing something to it um, at runtime. The function may not know what it is when we're writing this code, but at some point when we call this function, we've got to provide something to it. For example, uh, in my code, if I in my in the code block, I'm going to say return number plus five. And then if I just say this right now and save it, in fact, I can delete this part, just console log add five, and I don't provide it a number, I get this weird uh, three letters that look like non, N-A-N. That just means that there's it's null. There's It's not defined. That's because the add five function is expecting me to supply it with a number that it can add five to it and then return it to the to so that I can log it to the console. So I have to give it a number, and if I say five, then I get the expected functionality where it takes this number, which when we're calling the function, it's called an argument uh, rather than when we and when we. Um, wrote the function or when we declared it, that's called a parameter. The parameter is this number variable, but when we actually provide it a number or a value, that's that's a, um, it's a, uh, called an argument. We provided it an argument or we've passed in an argument is the way to say it. 
Um, and that, that argument is five. So essentially what we're asking is for the, the computer or for Node to log to the console, the add five function, and using five as the number that it expects. So that now it returns number plus five. If we wanted to, we could say add five y, which you recall y is equal to five. So we should see the number 10. And that's exactly what we see. Pretty cool. We can actually create any uh, a bunch of functions like this. Let's say um, let um, add five log equals function number. And return, or instead of return, we'll say console.log number plus five. And we can delete this line at the bottom. And now, instead of saying add five and then logging it to the console, we could say add five log y. And so now we're passing in y as an argument, and y is equal to five. So what the expected behavior here would be that we're um, we're going to log to the console this number or y plus five. So we should see ten again, and that's exactly what we see. So that's a great way of just like um, encapsulating some code that we want to use over and over again. So we could say add five log y add five log x or not x a we see 10 and 15 so we're using this function add five log not only to add numbers together but also to log it to the console and we can reuse that over and over again We'll see that when we make like a dice roller, that's going to be really useful because we don't have to rewrite code over and over again. We can just create a function and then we can run that function or call it whenever we need it. But there's something tricky here because um, the way that we've written this code, it it suggests as though um, these values that we've written up here are immutable, meaning that they can't change. Whereas that's not actually true. We can say right at the B be, um, let's delete this add five log a line and we can say add five log y and then y equals 10 and then add five log y again let's see what happens here we run our code and we say 10 and 15 well that what, what that means is that we uh, said add five log and um, we log to the console five plus five because y is equal to five then we reassigned y to ten and when we do add five log again now y is a different value on line 16 than it was on line 14 and so we get 15 rather than 10 um, and so you can just as easily do that and that sometimes will run you ragged and, and, and run you into trouble if you're um, if you think your variable is supposed to be equal to one thing, but it's not. It's It's been changed over the course of your code. So that's one thing to note. Great. So that's a brief introduction to functions. Uh, in the next video, we'll take a look at conditional logic and also for loops. And um, we'll uh, continue to build on this so that we can get into the meat and potatoes of building our, uh, building our games. I hope this video has been helpful for you. If it has, please be sure to like it and subscribe to my channel. I'd also love it for you to check out my books and games at entromancy.com or nightpathpub.com slash entromancy and help me spread the word about them. And we'll see you in the next video.